Track 36. Systems thinking. Systems thinking is a discipline for mapping out and understanding the whole system. The first discipline of systems thinking is to understand the system's modelling. If you think of reading a newspaper, reading the headlines and how we translate these into causes, what we see is the reason, and effects, what we think is going to happen. So, quite often, we look at the headlines, we will see, for example, climate change is happening quickly, and our response will be, oh, I'd better sell my house, or I'd better go and live at the top of a hill. So we start from a couple of facts, like climate change is happening quickly, and then we go all the way to the top of the ladder and say, therefore, this must be happening. And really, systems thinking is a way of looking at how we came to those conclusions and actually say, well, maybe it isn't quite that cause that leads to that effect. Personal mastery. Personal mastery makes us ask ourselves, what is it that I deeply care about? And what impact do I want to have on this system? Basically, how I want to be involved in the system. I think we see more and more people, especially younger generations, who really want authentic behaviour in companies. What it means is that they want people to be as honest as they can and to show that they are well-intentioned about their purposes in what they are offering or selling. And, of course, this is changing our understanding of what business really is. You see more and more social responsibility coming in, but it starts with people's personal mastery. Mental models Mental models are the underlying ideas that influence how we think and act. So that when you have a conversation in organisation learning terms, when someone says, well, I've just developed this new chair, many people would start talking about the functions and the features of the chair. In organisational learning, you might say, let's start by understanding the chair and its purpose in the context of what it is that we do. You would go to some more fundamental questions about what it is that we are trying to understand in the system. Shared vision. Mental models and shared visions are closely connected because people don't easily understand other people's mental models. Let me give you an example of that. If I ask people to describe the graph of their life, their past, present and future, and they draw it on a piece of paper, I will quite often say, well, I know that the x-axis will be time, but what is the y-axis? And what you find is that when people draw the line of their life, some people will say, that line is about happiness. Others will say it is about learning. Others will say it is about earning more money. So, shared vision is about getting people to understand that different people have different ways of looking at things. Team learning. The last one is about team learning. In the past, it has been noticed that teams haven't worked effectively. In teams, flaws in human behaviour arise. For example, in teams, we often avoid conflict, so we will not say what we really believe we should say. In teams, we will also conform to a norm. If there are power dynamics in the team, we will quite often go to meet the needs of those who we feel are superior over us and can control us and have an impact on our lives, potentially, or the resources that we need to get our work done. So team learning is about surfacing all of these issues and problems. When you do that, you start to really see that the team capability improves and is more effective.